Hello everyone, I am Vishnu Karthik from Thagur Medical College. Today we are going to talk about one of the important topics that is intercostal space. Uh, in theory aspect, uh, intercostal nerve plays a major role as it is a frequently asked 5 mark or else 15 marks along with the muscles. And also in the viva aspect, we have the muscles, uh, uh, intercostal muscles, which are the importantly asked uh, discussion questions. Okay. Let's uh, go into it. Here we are going to see about some introduction, structures present, muscles, nerve, artery, vein, lymphatics and the summary of all these. First of all introduction, what are the intercostal spaces? See this picture, um, we see the sternum here, this is the manubrium of sternum, this is the body of sternum and this is the siphi sternum, right? Here we have these, these are called as ribs and the blue colored structures are called as costal cartilage. Uh, ribs are connected to sternum with the costal cartilages and on the back side it is connected to the vertebra so here the space between the two ribs is called as intercostal space we have total 11 intercostal spaces as beyond the 12th rib we don't have any ribs okay. uh, now there are seven true ribs three false ribs and two floating ribs why they are called as so because true ribs uh, connect from the vertebra to the sternum directly and uh, false ribs connect with the vertebra to the sternum by merging with the another costal cartilage that is 8th, uh, 9th, 10th ribs connect with the sternum through the 7th costal cartilage. Then 10th, uh, 11th and 12th ribs are uh, called as floating ribs because they don't connect to the sternum. So we have totally 11 intercostal spaces. Then we have another type of classification which is very important. Third to sixth intercostal spaces are called as typical intercostal spaces while others are called as atypical. Why is it called so? Because the nerves and the arteries play a major role where we can determine whether it is typical or atypical. Typical means they are like same thing. Atypical means they are somewhat different from each other. What is common between 3rd to 6th intercostal spaces? Here we have the intercostal nerve and intercostal artery supplying only to those spaces and not to others, other areas such as the hand or to the abdominal wall. While 1st uh, and 2nd intercostal space have the uh, nerves and the arteries which supply to the arm, while uh, lower than 6th uh, intercostal space all of the nerves and arteries supply the abdominal wall. So they are not confined to that specific region. So we call it as a typical intercostal space. And uh, away of, uh, other than this, they are called as a atypical intercostal spaces. That's all about the introduction. Let's go into the structures present. We have intercostal muscles, intercostal nerves, intercostal vessels, that is the artery and the vein, and also the lymphatics. First of all, let's see about the intercostal muscles. We have various types of intercostal muscles. I have listed here five types of five muscles, intercostal muscles. They are called as external intercostal muscles, internal intercostal muscles, transversus thoracis. In this transverse plane, these muscles are arranged, so they are called as transversus thoracis. Since they are uh, differently arranged in different uh, extents, they are called as uh, collectively called as transversus thoracis, but they are named separately as intercostalis intimus, subcostalis, ternocostalis. Let's see each and every muscle in detail. Here we can see the intercostal muscle which is lying between the two ribs. We have different types of muscles see here. They are the external intercostal, internal intercostal, and most intercostal muscles. The most intercostal muscle is also called as intercostalis intimae. Now we are going to see about external intercostal muscles. There are 11 pairs of external intercostal muscles. First of all, for intercostal muscles, you should know about the origin, insertion, nerve supply, and action. Along with it, the direction of the fibers and also the extent because they differ with each and every muscle. Now let us see about the external intercostal muscle. It extends from costochondral junction to the tubercle of the rib. Costochondral junction is the junction between the rib and the costal cartilage. This is called costochondral junction. It just extends from here to the neck of the rib that is present on the back side. Anteriorly it forms the anterior intercostal membrane which uh, connects it till the sternum. It has its origin from the lower border of rib above 
and insertion on the outer lip of upper border of rib below lower border of rib above see here this is the origin of second intercostal muscle from here it originates and moves downwards forwards and medially to be inserted on the upper aspect of outer lip of rib below can thus infer from that uh, each muscle originates from upper bone to the lower bone nerve supply is by the intercostal nerve of the same space then its action it elevates the rib in inspiration external intercostal muscles are the only muscles that elevate the rib in inspiration because it is one of the active muscle of inspiration while expiration is a passive process and does not require any muscle during the normal conditions but in uh, forceful expiration uh, other intercostal muscles other than the external intercostal muscle uh, help in the expiration so these are the important aspects of external intercostal muscle originates from the lower border of rib above and inserts on the outer lip of upper border of rib below extending from costochondral junction to the neck of the rib anteriorly it forms the anterior intercostal membrane which lies along the sternum and the costochondral junction and its action is the elevation of the ribs okay now we are going to see about internal intercostal muscle here they are also 11 pairs it is mostly similar to the external intercostal muscle but there is a slight difference that is uh, external intercostal muscles uh, extend slightly posteriorly because anteriorly it forms the anterior intercostal membrane it is also called as external intercostal membrane here it forms posterior intercostal membrane that is the internal intercostal membrane okay so this muscle lies over anteriorly and external intercostal muscle lie more posteriorly i am telling it in the extent twice okay so here it extends from the lateral border of sternum see here it extends directly from the lateral border of sternum and ends in the angle of the rib and uh, beyond that it forms the posterior intercostal uh, posterior intercostal membrane okay this is the extent of internal intercostal muscle this arises from the costochondral junction to the angle of the rib while internal intercostal muscle arises from the near the sternum to the angle of the rib in its origin origin is the floor of costal groove of rib above see here uh, in the rib is uh, the lower part of the rib has the costal groove okay from that costal groove it arises then it inserts into the inner lip of upper border of rib below since it is since it is internal intercostal muscles it lies on the inner lip of the uh, upper border of rib below that is the uh, next rib downwards so it lies in the inner border of the rib below for external intercostal muscle it is outer border of the rib below because it is lying externally next direction of fibers direction of fibers uh, is a uh, 90 degree that is in right angles to that of the inter external intercostal muscles that is it also goes downwards but not forwards and medially like uh, it's an opposite to that that is backwards and laterally okay this is the difference between internal and uh, external intercostal muscles when you compare these two and read it will be very easy now supply and action now supply is the intercostal now and the action is the elevation of rib during expiration it in it is involved mainly in the forced expiration that's all about the internal intercostal muscles you see here these are the cadaveric image of the intercostal muscles these are the internal intercostal muscles and these are the external intercostal muscles how to identify them see the direction of the fibers see the external intercostal muscles go downwards forwards and medially that is in this direction see the internal intercostal muscles they are going in this direction okay so we can see that there is a 90 degree angle here that is right angles to that of each other so from the direction of the fibers we can identify the which muscle is external and which muscle is internal intercostal muscle in the cadaver next we can we are going to see about transversus thoracis transversus thoracis is a collection of three muscle which are intercostalis intimus which is a main muscle and then subcostalis and sternocostalis let's see about each and everything intercostalis intimus they are also present in the uh, 11 intercostal spaces extent here it is very important it does not extend anteriorly or posteriorly 
it just lies in the middle two fourth of the intercostal space okay see here these are the internal intercostals which arise near the sternum itself okay here from the costal cartilages uh, from the junction of the costal cartilage with the ribs that is costochondral junction we can see the external intercostal muscles here so uh, we can see another type of muscle see here this a uh, light colored structure these are called the innermost intercostals which originate from here and goes till the angle of the rib uh, the intercostal syncytious muscle does not extend anteriorly or does not extend posteriorly it lies only in the middle 2/4 of the intercostal space so this is the extent of intercostal syncytious nerve supply is the intercostal nerve of same space action is same as inter, uh, internal intercostal muscle direction is also same as internal intercostal muscles okay uh, origin and insertion see here the inner surface of the rib above to the inner surface of rib below it is very easy because it is the most deeply present intercostal muscle that's all about the intercostal is intimus it's very simple see here arrangement of three muscles uh, this uh, this is the outer outer aspect and this is the inner aspect see here we can see the uh, external intercostal muscles originating from the lower border of rib above to the outer lip of upper border of rib below internal intercostal muscles from the floor of costal groove to the inner lip of upper border of rib below and innermost intercostal that is intercostalis intimus which is arranged as uh, inner border of rib above to the inner surface of the rib below okay. between these structures that is in the costal groove we can see the neurovascular bundle neurovascular bundle means nerve and vessels that is artery and vein next sternocostalis it is another small muscle is anteriorly located see here name sternocostalis sternum to the costal cartilage this is this uh, name itself gives an idea about the where the or, uh, muscle originates and inserts see the origin origin is from the lower one third of body of sternum and the siphoid process along with the costal cartilage of lower 3 or 4 ribs okay so from here that is it originates from lower aspect and goes towards the upper aspect it inserts on the costal cartilage of second to sixth ribs this is the origin insertion of sternocostalis that arises from mainly from the sternum and inserts mainly in the costal cartilages easy to remember extent since sternum is present only anteriorly this muscle confined to the anterior region so uh, we saw that intercostalis intimus lies only to the middle 2/4 of the space so anterior and the posterior space are vacant no to fill this uh, these two muscles sternocostalis present anteriorly and subcostalis present posteriorly okay so they form the entire covering which we call as transversus thoracis collectively see the direction of the fibers here it goes upwards and laterally so this is the midline these are the lateral aspects so it goes upwards and laterally nerve supply by intercostal nerves direct action is uh, draws second to sixth costal cartilage downwards this also helps in the expiration see here two muscles this is the sternocostalis from the sternum goes towards the costal cartilages and there is a subcostalis muscle you can see on the near the vertebral column this is subcostalis muscle which extends along the posterior part of lower intercostal spaces only see here upper intercostal spaces are vacant only lower intercostal spaces we i can see this muscle subcostalis origin inner surface of the rib near the angle and insertion is the inner surface of second or third rib below near the angle of the rib it originates and goes towards the next rib or Uh, leaving that rib goes to other other rib see here this this part originates from here and leaving this inserts into here thus it is inserted now supply by the intercostal nerves action depressor of ribs it also helps in inspiration that's we covered all the muscles of the intercostal space let's see it again once again here first we can see the external intercostal muscle which extends this is what we can see in the extent okay see here 
anteriorly it does not extend from the sternum it extends on the costochondral junction and ends near the tubercle of the rib internal intercostal muscle more the anteriorly located no so it is present uh, from the sternum to the angle of the rib next this is called as transverse thoracis it forms a transverse lining that is present interiorly okay see the intercostal is intimus confined only to two fourth of the space in the middle of the intercostal space sternocostal is present anteriorly and the subcostal is present posteriorly between this internal intercostal muscle and the intercostal is intimus there lies the neurovascular bundle in the costal group next we are going to see about the most important five mark of uh, thorax this is a intercostal nerves first what are the intercostal nerves intercostal nerves are the nerves that are present in the intercostal space okay from where these nerves get originated let us see it in very detailed manner see in this picture we have the spinal cord here at the center into the vertebral column right from this spinal cord we have the uh, anterior and the posterior roots of the nerve that is here see here this is the anterior root and this is the posterior root these two roots combine to form a common nerve trunk that is called as spinal nerve all the spinal nerves arise in this manner that is from the joining of the anterior and posterior root which occurs within the vertebral column out of the vertebral column through the intervertebral foramen after emerging from the intervertebral foramen it divides into anterior and posterior branches see here this is the posterior branch it is also called as posterior rami and uh, this is the anterior branch which is called as anterior rami thus a uh, spinal nerve is formed which is uh, when the spinal nerve is present in the thoracic cavity that is within the intercostal space then we call it as intercostal nerve see after the emerging from the intervertebral foramen they divide into anterior and posterior rami the upper 11 spinal nerves are called as intercostal nerves why is it because there are 11 intercostal spaces so they are called as intercostal nerves 12th nerve is called as subcostal nerve subcostal meaning it is just below the 12th rib that is below the costal cartilages that is below the intercostal space so it is called as subcostal nerve these are the segmental nerves it is a special feature here because we see in the upper aspect c5 to t1 these nerve bundles with these spinal nerves arranged in the form of a plexus to supply to the upper limb which is called as the brachial plexus similarly when going lower than the thorax uh, we can see that there is another type of uh, cluster of nerves forming the lumbar plexus and the sacral plexus so all the, the which supply the lower limb so in the only thoracic cavity we can have the individual nerves which are segmental in origin that supply to the confined space classification it is classified as typical and atypical intercostal nerves typical means i already said no uh, when there is common feature it is called a typical here typical means this space can be supplied only by that nerve and that nerve cannot supply any other space that is called typical that is the nerve is confined to only to that space a typical intercostal nerves which are the first second and the seventh to eleventh nerves these nerves supply either the upper limb or to the abdomen let's see the course of the typical intercostal nerve first it emerges from the intervertebral foramen then passes anteriorly slightly and then laterally to be present in the costal groove thus it enters the costal groove by piercing the posterior intercostal membrane which is an extension of uh, internal intercostal muscle so thus it piercing the internal intercostal muscle it enters the costal groove then in the costal groove it travels as here and then when reaching anteriorly it passes posterior to the internal mammary artery which is also called as internal thoracic artery we will see again in detail in the relations now i am telling you the course 
thus it after emerging from the intervertebral foramen passes laterally to be placed in the costal groove then it travels along the costal groove and emerges anteriorly by piercing the anterior intercostal membrane as anterior cutaneous branch that supply the anterior part of thoracic cavity that is the skin skin over the anterior part of the thoracic cavity now let us see the relations in detail see here it gets originated from the intervertebral foramen that is the foramen placed between the two vertebral bones after origin passes laterally there is a sympathetic trunk here so it crosses sympathetic trunk posteriorly then curves laterally to go to the costal groove see here is there is the posterior intercostal membrane thus by piercing it it enters into the costal groove okay while piercing it it enters the costal groove no in the costal groove there is some relation see here this is called as van structure van van structure van means first there will be intercostal vein then will be intercostal artery then will be intercostal nerve this is called van structure and similarly here there is a collateral structures which are the mirror image of this structures try to remember as mirror images so that it will be easy van means n v a sorry n a v when you keep the mirror image of van it will be the lower part of the collaterals just in the costal groove it lies entirely in the form of this van structure then anteriorly it crosses the internal thoracic artery and vein and then emerges outwards anteriorly by piercing the anterior intercostal membrane which is a continuation of external intercostal muscle okay i told it already in the muscles thus it supplies the anterior cutaneous branch means what anterior means in the frontal aspect and uh, cutaneous means supplying the skin and the underlying tissues similarly when the nerve arises from this side it covers the entire thoracic cavity on the superficial aspect these are the relations of the typical intercostal nerve so first an origin it lies uh, it goes laterally and uh, lies anterior to that of lies posterior to that of the sympathetic trunk then lies in the costal groove in the form of van structures then crosses the internal thoracic artery and piercing the external intercostal membrane next you can see about the branches which is also very important these three things you should write in the exam for securing 5 marks along with the diagram see here first there is sympathetic chain right so this sympathetic chain gives gray and white ramae communicants these communicants send and receive the sympathetic uh, influences so first there will be gray ramae and white ramae communicants to the sympathetic chain sympathetic chain is nothing but the, there will be collection of ganglion ganglion means nerve cell bodies collection that are present along the either side of the vertebral column so they form the chain like structure that is they are continuous so called as chain from there they will get the sympathetic supply okay that's the first branch is from the sympathetic chain that is the gray and white ramae communicants see next we can see that the near the neck of the rib there will be emergence of another branch which goes along the same course of the intercostal nerve but lies below it which is called as collateral branch this collateral branch we saw here in the lower part these are the collaterals collaterals means run along with that same branch but in the lower aspect see it arises near the neck of the rib and travels along with the intercostal nerve to reach the internal structure it is a motor to all the muscles motor means that controls the movements of the muscle motor to muscles and sensory to pleura and the periosteum but not skin runs in the neurovascular plane just above the rib so it is present just above the rib below that is the see here this is the ne- next rib it presents just above the rib it's very important in thoracocentesis as we will be injecting a needle which should not damage this nose for a vital function 
so it also it is motor to muscles and also sensory to pleura and periosteum pleura and periosteum sensory means it will carry sensation such as pain okay so this is both motor and sensory now but does not supply the skin skin is supplied by cutaneous branches of the main typical intercostal nerve it is also a branch of uh, typical intercostal nerve okay so we have covered two branches till now which are the sympathetic branches that is gray and white rami communicants and uh, collateral branch next branch we are going to see is about lateral cutaneous branch lateral cutaneous branch also arises near the neck of the rib travels along the course of the intercostal nerve and in the when it reaches the region of mid axillary line that is the line that is drawn from the mid, uh, middle of the axilla on the side of the body so when it reaches the mid axillary line it emerges the skin and uh, appears outside and gives its uh, terminal branches posteriorly and anteriorly so that it covers the entire lateral aspect of the thoracic cage so lateral cutaneous branch supply the skin that is present on the lateral side of the body next another terminal branch is the anterior cutaneous branch because it is the ending of the typical intercostal nerve directly in the typical intercostal nerve pierces the anterior thoracic wall and gives uh, terminal branches as uh, medial and lateral branches they supply the anterior thoracic wall another branch is the muscular branch which supply the intercostal muscles okay that's we have covered all the branches of